It's time for a tag! Kim here, welcome back. I was tagged. I was excited to be tagged by JD to do the pizza tag, which is fantastic because pizza is like my favorite food. Like I could eat my body weight in pizza every week. I don't even care. I love it so much. Um, I'm gonna leave all the linky links for JD's channel down there. I'm not sure who the original was. So I'm just gonna do my best to find what I can and put the linky links down there for that as well. We have some pizza themed questions. Okay, let's get started. Question one, cheese. A simple work that possesses much more depth to it. For this one I went with The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. It's a short book. It's a simply written book, if that makes sense. Neil Gaiman just has this really great way of simplicity in writing. And so that's why I picked it for this was because although this it's written in a clear, simple way, there is just so much going on with this story about like childhood and like innocence and magic, all sorts of just cool things. I really loved it and it is short and simple, so it's deceiving in its depth. Number two is Pepperoni, a well-known, continuously popular work. There were a lot of things I could have chose for this. I decided on one that I end up using in a book tag very often, but it just felt like the right answer for me. The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. Ugh, movie cover, boo. Everyone knows it. I don't know anybody that doesn't like it. Obviously it's popular as they're making movies. So although they stop making movies, are they gonna make more movies? I don't even know. The point is, it's popular, it's fantastic, it's well known, and it probably always will be. Number three is Mushroom, a textbook you found engaging. This, I actually had a lot to choose from because I really liked being in college. Anything other than math, I really loved. So I kind of had to dig through some stuff, but the one I kept coming back to that I knew was the answer is The Secret Teachings of All Ages by Manly P. Hall. These tabs were put in after I finished my mythology and sacred texts class. So there's that. I actually come back to this book for research for my own writing very often because it has a lot of mythological, old folklore, old cultural sort of things. And especially when I wrote my last series, Demonic Illusions, I mean, it literally deals with demons. And so I came back to this book about cultural and religious references to demons and things like that. It was insanely helpful for me. And I don't know, it's just got so many like cool things about so many things that are like considered, you know, paranormal, pagan, that kind of thing now. Um, it's just really fascinating to, to flip through very often, which I do, um, as you can see. And yeah, so I don't know, I just like learning about all that cool mythological ancient stuff. Number four is Sausage, a literary work that has just the right dose of a particular genre. First I had to choose a genre, and then I had to choose the book that had the right dose of that genre. I just decided to go with 1984 by George Orwell, the original dystopian novel. I don't even know if you can call it the original dystopian novel. There may be stuff before this, but this is just when you think dystopia, like this is the poster child. This like was such a cool revolutionary genre in a way. And it's just so dystopian. It just is like in every way. And it's wonderful. And I really should reread this maybe I'll do that this year. I think I'm gonna reread this this year. It's dystopian perfection. Number five, extra cheese. So cheesy. A work that was longer than it needed to be. I read this whole book. Ugh, well, okay. Memnock the Devil by Anne Rice. The fifth book in the Vampire Chronicles. This book isn't even that long. I mean, it's not even 500 pages. I just, like, so many times in this book, I found myself saying, hey, Memnock, are you still talking? Because he just goes on and on and on and on and on, and I know that this story is about, like, the creation, the resurrection, and the blah, 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 on and on and on. It just, the way it was told was not captivating for me, and just felt so drug out. And I really, really like this series, so I was really surprised when that happened. <laughs> but like, oh, it just was, this book could have been half as long with the same amount of information, I feel like. And I feel really bad because I'm a big fan of this series. I just was bummed that that happened. 
Number six, garden. Favorite literary vegetarian. This can be a, a writer that's a vegetarian or a book character that's a vegetarian. I'm not gonna lie to you. I had to Google this and I just literally Googled vegetarian book characters. When a list came up on Goodreads, I got really excited because there was one I totally forgot about who's like one of my favorite book characters ever. Arya from The Inheritance Cycle by Christopher Polini. Arya's so cool. Like, she's so cool. Like, she's just cool, okay? And I totally forgot the elves are vegetarians in this. And yeah, sometimes I wish I could be a vegetarian. I really like animals, but I just don't have it in me. It tastes really good. Oh, that's awful. Oh my gosh, I just said that. Anyway, Arya's really cool and she's a vegetarian because she's an elf. Grandma. Number seven is grandma. There's a grandma pizza. Grandma pizza? I had to look that up too. It's some sort of like specific Sicilian sort of pizza type. The question is a work that makes you think of your grandparents. Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift. That took me a thousand years to say. My grandpa was in the Navy and he was very proud of being in the Navy, and we were very proud of him for being in the Navy. Gulliver, in Gulliver's Travels, is a sailor, and he ends up accidentally sailing to really weird places. And anyway, but it made me think of my grandpa when I read this, because Gulliver, like, had a, he even had like a wife and a child and stuff, and he still was like, nope, gotta sail. Gotta be nautical, gotta be on the ocean. And it just kind of makes me think of my grandpa because because he always, he had a few little nautical collector things and stuff like that. He had like a nautical naval tattoo and everything. And so anyway, so it just made me think of my grandpa because of like this like sailing and like open seas and like navy sort of stuff. Number eight, Hawaiian. A work with a tropical atmosphere. After just scouring through my shelves, the only book I could really come up with was Lord of the Flies by William Golding. I actually only got through the first couple chapters of this book and then I had to shelf it for reasons that I can't remember right now, but not because I didn't like it, just because, I don't know, life was happening or something. But, hi, kids on a like deserted tropical island. That's very tropical. Number nine is anchovy. A work you feel most people dislike. Anytime a book tag question says dislike, my first instinct is Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert. I disliked Madame Bovary herself. The book actually wasn't so bad, but Madame Bovary drives me crazy. And I don't know if she drives anybody else crazy, but I feel like she should drive everybody crazy because she is sort of kind of a terrible human being. By default, this book should really like just ruffle feathers because she is just a cheating cheater who cheats. Ugh. Number 10 is Stuffed Crust, a book that grabbed your attention at first sight. I saw this book on Tumblr for a little while before I bought it and the cover and just people were saying good things about it and things and then I saw it. Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo. When I found it at the bookstore and it had this cool raven with the towers in its wings, you know? And then I saw these black pages and I died inside. This is the coolest thing. All books should look like this. This is gorgeous. Anyway, so then I grabbed it and then I read it and then I loved it. So that just worked out perfectly. Number 11 is best of the best. What's your favorite kind of pizza? I'm not going to apologize for this, but my favorite kind of pizza is pineapple, bacon, and feta cheese, real bacon. Not Canadian bacon, like American bacon, like just regular bacon and pineapple and feta cheese. I'm not even sorry. It's delicious. I'm not going to apologize at all for that. Number 12 is pizza party. Who do you tag? Oh, I always forget. Like I go through tags and I put everything together and get all the books and everything. And then don't even consider who I'm going to tag. Who am I going to tag? Who am I going to tag? Who am I going to tag? I have no idea. Here's what I'm going to do. Because my battery is dying and I got to go. So I'm gonna like scroll down here. That's who I tag. So um, I'm gonna leave all the linky links down there. And thank you JD for tagging me. This was a fantastic tag with some cool questions 
and I really had to do some thinking. I love being tagged. It's just, it's just nice. It's just a fun thing. And so um, those of you I tag, no pressure. And if you want to do this and I didn't tag you, consider yourself tagged. Um, as always, that's just a standing rule with me, with anyone, I think, really. Um, okay, and now I think I'm gonna go eat some pizza. Thanks for watching, everyone. Subscribe if you feel like it, and we will see you in my next video. Go girls! Go girls! Guys, the struggle for good lighting is real. Grrrrrrrs, go blurs. Okay, so, oh jeez, this book is huge. Globalals. Globalals. The, how? How do I keep hitting myself in the face? Globalals, oh my gosh.